Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a Microsoft Operating Systems Engineer going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days, and I'm starting to get excited about a forthcoming major addition to the shop lab, a 30-drive Storinator Rack Mount NAS. I'm still trying to decide how to best set it up in terms of virtualization, NAS storage, and so on. For such questions, I often turn to a few core channels, one in particular being Craft Computing, where the host Jeff has set up quite a number of Proxmox and TrueNAS systems, including various forms of virtualization, all with enough detail that at least I understood what was possible. But I still wasn't sure what was the best way to set up my particular system, so I turned to Jeff directly and had him join me here in the shop via Zoom. Jeff, welcome to the shop. Technical formalities out of the way, it's nice to finally make your acquaintance in person. Thank you. Thank you. I've been a fan of your channel for quite a while and I've enjoyed a great number of your videos, so it's great to finally get to pick your brains directly on a few important storage and virtualization matters. My reason for wanting to reach out in the first place is that you've done a number of videos on Proxmox and TrueNAS and I'm facing a number of related decisions that I'm hoping to make right the first time. As I mentioned earlier on, I'm about to add a Storinator Q30 to the shop. In its initial config, it'll have a 12-core Xeon, 128 gigabytes of RAM, and 15 of the 14 terabyte drives for something like 210 terabytes of total storage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got an AV15, which is the smaller brother to that one. It's the 15-drive Storinator. Okay. To give you some context on what I'm migrating from, I currently have a pair of Synology DS2419 Plus RAID boxes, which are 12 bays each. Unfortunately, it's somewhat hobbled by the Atom processor, and doing any real work is asking a lot of it. I yes. found I couldn't do RAID 6 with it, not, not successfully, mm -hmm. and not, at a, not, not and saturate a 10 gig network anyway. So at right, uh, right. RAID 5 on the Atom, I'm able to get away with it, but I can't use the machine for anything else. So I'd like to move a bunch of virtualization to the Storinator as well. Mm -hmm. It also means that there's really no spare cycles left to do much else with the machine, and I would like to move a bunch of virtualization that I currently run off of the desktop machines that it's running on now. That's also the reason I decided not to just do bare metal as well, because I certainly could just do TrueNAS on the hardware directly, but with Proxmox or similar, it gives me another layer of flexibility to run the VMs on the server. Right, and uh, that's kind of how I've been running my servers for the last couple of years is... 100% uh, on virtualization. So I use Proxmox primarily. Um, I've used a couple different uh, different hypervisors, but that's the one that I settled in that I, I really like the feature set of, stability. Uh, it uh, integrates ZFS directly into it. So you get all the features of ZFS on your hypervisor layer, as well as any guest machines that you have, um, which I just like. Uh, and then I've actually been running uh, TrueNAS virtualized underneath that for quite some time. And uh, um, there's been a lot of, there's a lot of the community that hates the idea of TrueNAS being virtualized, but it's because there hasn't been a great way to do it up until about three to four years ago. And I think a lot of the recommendations for, you know, no, keep your NAS bare metal has not caught up with the virtualization tech uh, because PCI Express pass-through and, and host direct CPU pass-through those are both giving you essentially bare metal access to the native hardware. There's no translation, there's no virtualization of that if you're just handing TrueNAS your HBA and your CPU. So if I understand correctly, I'll be able to pass my HBA or the host bus adapter on through to the TrueNAS session. And actually, I believe I'll have a pair of HBAs, so I'll be passing them both through to the client operating system, which I guess would be TrueNAS in this case. Yeah. Currently, I'm running a bunch of Hyper-V sessions on a 5950 desktop, and that's what I'd like to move off to a closet somewhere. I don't actually have the Storinator hardware in hand yet, so I set up a mock-up under Hyper-V, but that, that meant I was running TrueNAS under Proxmox, which in turn was running under Windows Hyper-V, and by that point, the network performance was poor enough that I couldn't saturate the network anymore. I presume there was some inefficiency in the virtualization layers? That's uh, not necessarily because of the virtualization layers, more due to the virtualization of the network hardware itself. Um, oftentimes uh, with Hyper-V and, and a lot of uh, more generic hypervisors, I would call them, uh, uh, you know, virtual machine from, uh, uh, gosh, drawing a blank now. Anyway, um, a lot of virtual machines or hypervisors will emulate specific network hardware. And uh, the common one for like KVM inside of Proxmox is an Intel E1000. Uh, and so it's emulating a gigabit, 
connection and, uh, and routing that out through your physical connection on your hypervisor. The problem is you are limited to uh, that gigabit speed. There's no, there's no cranking it up at all. Right. Uh, there is a method of virtualizing network connections that will run as fast as they as they possibly can, as fast as your CPU clocks will allow. And uh, it was originally developed by Red Hat, and it's called Vert IO. It's virtual virtualized IO. Um, that takes the hardware emulation portion out of the virtualization for networking and uh, using some proprietary drivers just kind of makes it work. Uh, you, it'll negotiate at a 100 gig link to your hypervisor and then the max speed of your physical network is what you'll be able to get out of it. So it, it takes the, the, the roadblock out of the hypervisor. Okay. If that makes sense. It does. So does that obviate the need for me to install a second physical NIC and then pass that through to TrueNAS or would that still be a good idea? Uh, it depends on your specific bandwidth needs and what all other services that you're running. Um, for me, I have uh, just a 10 gig line running directly to my, uh, my Storinator and I'm running both a virtualization stack as well as TrueNAS inside of a VM. And I'm actually using uh, the TrueNAS array for video editing here in my office. And even with that traffic going on, even with, you know, 500 or, you know, five gigabit worth of traffic for, you know, slinging video content around, there's still plenty of bandwidth left for other tasks. Uh, so if you're going to be loading up your NAS and constantly hitting it and then slowing down other tasks, yeah, absolutely pass through another 10 gig link, or you don't even necessarily need to pass it through. Just add another 10 gig link to your hypervisor and then you do virtualize connection to TrueNAS and then whatever route it wants to take out through your physical, it can do that and it'll load balance itself. So the VertIO system is efficient enough that I don't need to do it in hardware? Right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly what it is, yeah. Now, one thing I had considered almost on a whim was to simply install Windows Server on the box and add all 15 drives through the Windows storage spaces. Then I could set up a RAID array and share it out just as SMB and so on, but I don't really know how well suited Windows is to managing larger drive arrays like that. I've wondered how it manages hot spares and some of the more common edge cases. I should know more about it than I do, but my initial sense was that it's not as flexible as something like TrueNAS. Not, not really. Uh, I've I, I've deployed a number of server of Windows Server storage arrays uh, throughout the years, um, and it's it's kind of Windows Server. As as much used as it is in uh, small and medium sized businesses for like a single one off solution, um, it's not it's not the best tool for anything. It just happens to do everything. Right. Um, and so uh, with Windows uh, storage spaces, you're you're going to be on NTFS. You're going to be limited to Windows Software RAID. You're going to be limited to but unless you go with like a full on hardware RAID solution. But the industry is kind of migrating away from hardware RAID in general um, and, and going towards ZFS or, you know, EXT based based RAID solutions. Uh, so while Windows can do it, the management of it and everything else is just kind of a, a cluster on top of it. And the other choice, the third alternative, I suppose, would be to run a server OS like Ubuntu, but then with the 45 drive Houston control center on top of that. The only thing I don't really know is how it provides the underlying functionality. My guess is that it's a UI wrapped around command line tools, but I'm not really sure yet. Right. Uh, so it it works very well. Uh, uh, Houston is a re-implementation of, I'm forgetting the other name of the project, but it's uh, it's basically a forked version of, um, of another uh, project. Uh, and it's basically just using... Uh, Houston as a shell over the top of Ubuntu and the the compatibility that it has. So you're downloading straight from the the Debian repository to get your ZFS compatibility and and set up all your other systems. Um, if you set up virtualization, it'll download KVM for you. But at that point, you're basically just running Proxmox because Proxmox is the Debian base with a uh, <laughs> with with KVM as the hypervisor. Right. Um, so uh, I've always been of the opinion I try to use. Um, 
uh, as far as the high level software goes, as far as like Proxmox, TrueNAS, Windows, that kind of thing, uh, specifically for the tasks that they're designed for. Um, and that's not that they can't do other things, uh, you know, because Proxmox is just a Debian based Linux system, you could install uh, ZFS and, and run a file share off of it. And, and it'd probably be just fine as long as you wanted to do everything in command line and never touch the GUI. And if you had a problem, there's no notification system built into it. Whereas TrueNAS, and especially now with TrueNAS scale, is now a Debian based distribution that has all those tools in a GUI with all the features and, and specs that you would want. So, and whereas TrueNAS does virtualization, uh, it's not the most robust virtualization in the world. Uh, so, you know, try to pick the tool that is best at, at what it's being best at. Right. That's another question I had. Since Proxmox itself supports ZFS directly, what am I going to gain by going to TrueNAS on top of Proxmox, which already supports ZFS? Uh, adding it on top, you get, uh, like I said, the um, the GUI interface and uh, all of the features kind of just right at your fingertips. Uh, because Proxmox itself does not have a GUI for sharing out, uh, for creating file shares, for okay. doing all that kind of stuff. So if you wanted to go through and, and bash your way through the command line, you absolutely can, because at, at the core, it's the same, it's the same thing. It's the same uh you know, same packages that you're deploying. It's how they're presented and what tools you have right there in front of you. Uh, where Proxmox has a full robust virtualization suite, PCI Express pass-through, it's got uh, a whole bunch of different presets for uh, what kind of kinds of VMs you want to run and, and how they run. Whereas TrueNAS has all of that stuff, but for file sharing, you can create SMB and iSCSI and, and NTF or N NFS file shares and uh, get notifications. It has snapshots built in. It has, and they're just all a click away. Now in the Synology, they have a RAID type called Synology Hybrid RAID that allows you to add drives later in an ad hoc fashion. Now, I don't need that level of flexibility, but I do, if I wish to expand the volume at some later point, Will I need to add drives in a block of 15 or can I do it with more granularity than that? Um, at the moment, kind of yes. Uh, if you wanted to expand the the one storage pool that you have, so let's say you imported all 15 of your drives as a single storage pool. If you wanted to expand that one pool, you would need to add another 15 drives uh, because it would need to redo all of its parity and, and go through all of its things for ZFS. Um, you could always add more drives and create additional storage pools. So if you wanted to create an additional ZFS2 storage pool and, you know, buy eight drives later on, and now you have two storage pools that you work out of, um, that's totally an option. Uh, the method in which uh, Synology does uh, hybrid uh, RAID is very similar to the way that uh, Unraid does it, uh, where they call JBOD or just a bunch of disk arrays. Um, you basically use one parity drive and then you give it as many data drives as you want. So all the parity is stored on one drive. And yeah, you can add as many disks as you would like so long as your parity drive stays up, up to the spec of being able to hold all that parity data. Right. Uh, the downside is when uh, is both in performance. If uh, you're never going to get beyond a certain level of performance uh, and it's actually quite low, it's usually about 150 to 200 megabytes per second. Uh, on a spinning disk raid, um, and uh, you're you're always going to be limited to that particular system. Uh, so, while ZFS it's not as easy to expand, uh, it is definitely much more performant. So, in terms of raid levels, is my understanding correct that RAID five is roughly equivalent to ZFS one, and RAID six is equivalent to ZFS two? Yes. Okay. Yeah. If I wanted to split up my 15 drives in such a way as to allow for more flexible future expansion, would I be better to split it into three dev nodes of five drives each? Or would you recommend that I, or what's the best way to break up 15 drives? I guess I'll just ask more generally. Honestly, my, my question would be if you needed to break up the 15 drives um, and, and what kind of a use case would be for that? Because adding another pool um, would would basically just be a second working directory from your main storage pool. Because un under under TrueNAS and under the way it works is every every uh, storage pool that you add just gets added to your mount directory. 
uh, under the under the root. And so you have root, and then you'd have you know storage array one. If you add a second storage array, it's just storage array two, right under that in the same physical working directory. Um, and so as far as file sharing and routing and all that kind of stuff, that all can still happen just as easy through the point and click interface. Uh, as far as expansion, I know that IX Systems, who's the maintainer of, of TrueNAS, um, I know they are looking at ways to expand ZFS raids uh, where you can add you know, certain percentages or, or maybe a couple individual disks to existing raids. Um, I know process progress has been fairly slow because again, they have to figure out how to rewrite parity across every single drive while they're doing that. Um, and make it make sense for expansion. You know, what happens if I'm 90% full on my 15, 20 terabyte drives and I want to add two more 20 terabyte drives? Well, now I have to shuffle all of that data around to re-equalize it. Uh, so, like I said, it gets a little weird. Um, if it were me, I, I would probably side towards just adding a second drive pool as you expand. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, and, and shuffling your data around as you need, because that, that's kind of what I do is I'll, I'll buy eight disks at a time and add them, add them to my, my NAS. And as I outgrow that array, I'll migrate some of my less critical data down to the old one and I'll buy eight new drives and that becomes my new primary array. My main problem, and I guess it's really self-inflicted, is that I have one big flat folder called Final Cut Archives and I keep like 80 terabytes of projects in that one folder. I haven't yet split that up into different volumes or organized it by year even, so it's just one big old block of data. Yeah. Not I fully I understand that too. I, I I still have a couple couple folders inside my NAS that are just called storage, and it's whatever I kept from like six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> no organization at all. In Synology land, you're limited to a volume size of something like 108 terabytes. With TrueNAS, is there any practical limit like that that I need to plan ahead for? No. No, you can go to multi-petabytes in, in TrueNAS on a single array, if as long as you have controllers to connect everything. So, If my machine has 120 gigabytes and is primarily dedicated to TrueNAS, and if I want to have enough RAM for good caching, how much RAM do you think I should allocate to the TrueNAS VM? Um, honestly, I'm, I've seen very little performance increase beyond about 64 gigs in some of the newer versions of TrueNAS. Um, they're, they seem to be a lot more efficient at removing cache data that it doesn't need anymore and then adding in what you're currently working on. Um, whereas old versions kind of like, they would fill your RAM cache until it was full and then it was, you know, first in, last out kind of thing. Um, now it seems to be a little bit more dynamic where it's it's grabbing only the bits that it needs and then it's letting it go at certain points. Uh, so whereas like three years ago, I would give uh, my TrueNAS machine, you know, 128 gigs of RAM and it would use 120 of it all the time. Uh, over the last year or so, I've I've been running 64 gigs and it's only using between 30 and 40 at a time. and And I have the same arrays plus a couple new ones that have, that have been added into those same pools. So uh, honestly, 64 gigs is probably all you need to run it. Okay. Well, I think you've answered all my really fundamental questions. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time out to lend your expertise. You saved me from quite a few potential missteps. So it's actually been really helpful. And thank you for joining me out here in the shop with Virtual Jeff today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time right here in Dave's Garage. <laughs>